to our studios here in Mevaseret Zion. My name is Jay Rawlings and I'm giving you a commentary, a biblical commentary on the news today. This has been a very, very interesting week. With the election of Barack Obama as the 44th President of the United States and his inauguration uh, just a few days ago, um, hope has risen in the hearts of men everywhere. This young man embodies a tremendous sense of, of hope and expectation for young people, young people of color, um, people from all over the world. He has a, a, you know, a, an Arab father or at least a Muslim father and so the Arab nations are claiming him and the, the Arab African nations are claiming him and people of minorities all over the world are, are, are looking to him. And uh, it's, so it's wonderful and it's a very special time and uh, he's proven himself already by his first day in office taking some very, very hard positions on, uh, you know, freezing the salaries of all of his top people, saying that it has to be a time of belt tightening and it has to be a time of uh, transparency of the government of the United States as a, uh, a change, a welcome change. And uh, this is wonderful. But my point is that uh, we have to be careful not to put you know, all of our hope in one man because as the commentators have said on the news that I've been watching, he can't perform and deliver on every, every item, every issue that faces him. It was interesting to me living here in Jerusalem that uh, almost uh, immediately after his inauguration, he made phone calls on his first morning in office to the leaders here in the Middle East of Mahmoud Abbas from the Palestinian Authority of of Echum Omert, the Prime Minister of Israel, to Hosni Mubarak, the President of Egypt, and the King Hussein uh, Abdullah uh, uh, in, in uh, Jordan. And so he was very keen about getting, uh, you know, all his ducks in a row, as it were, for the Middle East. And that's, that's special. And we hope that he can make a difference over here. However, we have to be careful not to, you know, have him be the Messiah because in fact only the Messiah will really bring true and lasting peace forever in this place. His name is the Prince of Peace after all. He is the Sar Shalom and he will be the one uh, to do that. But our prayers are with uh, President Obama. I'd like to say this, that we have had a lot of interest expressed in our programs as well. Just yesterday, I got a phone call from uh, Romania, from Timisoara, and it's a young man there that I met some years ago at a conference, a media conference in, in Europe. And his name is Tudor Petan. And he and his wife have set up Alpha and Omega Television in Romania. And they love our work. They've seen what we're doing uh, over the years. They are watching now on the internet. And uh, they're asking us to send all of our material on Israel to them because they said they have unprecedented interest in Israel uh, in Romania. In fact, his wife has set up 100 churches who are praying every day for the peace of Jerusalem and they want information. So you can see, ladies and gentlemen, there's a real interest in this part of the world, both politically and spiritually. And I'd like to just remind us that there's a scripture in Zechariah chapter 2, verse 8 that says, He that touches Israel touches the apple of my eye. And that word apple in Hebrew actually means pupil or the place where the iris or the focal point is, the lens is contained in the eye. And it's so important, the Lord says, don't touch it. Um, but it doesn't say you're not to be concerned and interested about it and to know about it. And that's what we're trying to do is get information out among the nations. And we've been doing this like for 40 years now almost. Uh, getting the word out about Israel and what has happening here. And all over the world today, there's this grassroots movement that's happening that's very, very interesting. It is a movement that is not orchestrated by any uh, denomination, no church leader, no uh, politician. It's something that the Holy Spirit is doing. He's putting in the hearts of men and women everywhere to want to know more about Israel. These two men that have been in touch with us this week are just proof of that. And that's exciting to us because we want to get the word out. Now the focal point of the eye is the iris. And so you can see what's happening in the rest of the world and understand what's happening in the rest of the world 
when you see through the iris correctly. So that's why the Lord is saying, don't touch that, but actually bless that. And then if you do that, you'll be able to understand what's happening in the world. There is a big plan. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a big plan that's happening in the world. And uh, I want to encourage you to look to the Word of God to see how that plan is unfolding. And one of the things that God is doing is He's saying, I'm bringing back my glory to this land and I'm bringing back my blessing and I'm bringing my people back home and I'm bringing them and I'm, they're building the old waste places and they're establishing what uh, was broken down. The day after the election in the newspaper, uh, there was an article in the paper in the Jerusalem Post, which by the way is an excellent newspaper, uh, an article that uh, where President Peres of Israel had been interviewed and he was saying that this is an era of hope. And as I began in the beginning of this uh, commentary, yes, that it's an era of hope, and we're very excited about that. And we want to get word out that will bring hope in the hearts of men and women. Because if you look at what's happening in the economy, if you look happening, all the nations that are rising up against each other, um, violence, craziness happening all over the world, people need hope today. And my contention is that hope only comes from the Word of God. I love the scripture here in Psalm 32, verse 10. It says, The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of the peoples of no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. I'll repeat that. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of His heart to all generations. So God has a plan and He's working out this big plan and Israel's directly involved in that. And so if you can see Israel in this position as part of God's plan on earth, and you bless that, then you will be blessed. And, the, and it says, blessed is the nation or people whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own inheritance. So of course we know that Jewish people are chosen as the inheritance, you know, as the uh, chosen people, or the inheritance people, but also you are. If you are a believer in the living God and you follow through on blessing Israel, you will be blessed. Well, that's all we have the time for today, and we're looking forward to being back together with you again tomorrow when we can share with you how the Word of God and uh, the newspaper that can work together and we can learn things from both sources. Thanks. God bless you. See you soon.